Puerto Rico last night and you're on the cusp of being the first female nominee of a major party. What does that mean to you and how are you reflecting on that? You know, Dan, I am really just so focused on all the states that are voting tomorrow. That is my singular um, focus because I, I know that there's a lot of work still going on. I have uh, just a huge number of supporters and volunteers across all of these states and I'm going to stay focused on the contests uh, that are going to uh, uh, take place tomorrow. And I'll have more to say about all this. Obviously, I was delighted to win Puerto Rico, delighted to win the Virgin Islands. We are moving forward um, every day. And, you know, by tomorrow night, I'll have more to say about it. But I, I want everyone in the states that vote tomorrow to come out and vote and bring their families and their friends and everybody else because uh, it's not over until it's over. And tomorrow is a really important day, particularly right here in California. No matter what happens tomorrow, Bernie Sanders has said the convention of Philadelphia will be contested. Uh, do you think there's anything you can do to change that at this point? I'm going to wait and see where uh, where we all are after tomorrow. Um, I am, as you rightly point out, on the path to not only have a very big lead in the uh, popular vote, but a very significant lead in the pledged delegates. And so uh, we'll take stock about where we are tomorrow. I'm going to do everything I can to unify uh, the Democratic Party, and I certainly am going to be reaching out uh, to Senator Sanders and hope he will join me in that, because we've got to be unified going into the convention and coming out of the convention uh, to take on Donald Trump and to repudiate uh, the kind of campaign he is running and make it very clear that's not uh, the kind of president or commander-in-chief we want. Secretary Clinton, sorry for repeating Dan's question, but... Um, Okay. Here, but is it setting in that you might be making some serious history <laughs> Well, I am obviously really uh, excited about that, but I'm not letting myself focus on it yet because I want people to come out and vote tomorrow, particularly here in California. Uh, we have worked so hard. I have a huge number of supporters and organizers that are working as we speak to get out the vote, to get people to mail in their ballots who haven't yet. So I'm going to wait until uh, everyone has voted tomorrow night. We'll have a chance to talk more about this. But um, it's been an incredible journey, and I will have a lot to say about it. But right now, I'm still out here, as you can tell, at the 
at the Senior Center in Compton, talking to voters, encouraging people to come out and vote. Do you so think it's really been been do you believe that uh, some prominent Democrats have come out saying we maybe need to reevaluate the superdelegate system more broadly, irrespective of what happens in this primary? Do you support looking into that and perhaps getting rid of them? Oh, there'll be plenty of time to talk about that. But um, I believe as of tomorrow, I will have uh, more than 3 million votes, more than Bernie Sanders. I will have a substantial lead in pledged delegates. Um, Superdelegates have always followed the will of the voters. I expect them to do the same this time. Do you think he should concede as you did? Well, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait and find out. Uh, actually, tomorrow is uh, eight years to the day after I withdrew and endorsed uh, then-Senator Obama. Uh, I believed it was the right thing to do, no matter what differences we had in our long campaign. They paled in comparison to the differences we had with the Republicans, and that is actually even more true today because whatever differences Senator Sanders and I have had, we've stuck mostly to the issues. We have differences there, but we have um, discussed them and, and put forth our cases. And Donald Trump has run a campaign of insults. So anyone who supported me, anyone who has supported Senator Sanders has a lot at stake in this election in preventing Donald Trump from being uh, our president, which I can barely say. <laughs> Well, we'll be talking about all of that in uh, the next uh, days, and I look forward to that. Obviously, I'm excited about having the president's support um, because I, I have said throughout this campaign, uh, I was honored to serve in the president's cabinet as his secretary of state. I don't think he's gotten the credit he deserves for saving our economy from the uh, great recession that it was uh, experiencing when he became uh, president. I want to continue and further the progress that we've made, and that's another big difference between uh, where I stand and where Donald Trump stands. He wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act. He wants to go back to failed economic policies that would really hurt uh, working people in our country. Uh, he doesn't want to raise the minimum wage. He believes equal pay is uh, not a real issue, on and on. So I'm going to look forward to campaigning uh, as a uh, really strong advocate for what I think will make the country uh, get going again with the economy growing. The president got us out of that ditch. Now we've got to run with it. And I've laid out plans to do just that. Last night when you took stage in Sacramento, there was a woman standing next to me who was absolutely sobbing. And she said, you know, it's time. It's past time. And you see the women, you see people here. And people just come up to you and, and they, they get tears in their eyes. Right. Do, you feel, do you feel the weight of what this means for people? I, I do. I do. And you saw it yesterday. I've seen it for more than a year. My supporters are passionate. They are committed. They have voted for me in great numbers across our country for many reasons. But among those reasons is their belief that... Um, having a woman president will make a great uh, statement, a historic statement, uh, about what kind of country we are, what we stand for. It's really emotional. And I am someone who um, has been very touched and really encouraged by this extraordinary conviction that people have. It's predominantly women and girls, but not exclusively. Men bring their daughters to meet me and uh, tell me that they are supporting me because of their daughters. And I do think it will make a very big difference for a father or a mother to be able to look at their daughter just like they can look at their son and say, you can be anything you want to be in this country, including President of the United States. Well, okay, folks. Do you expect what? the President's endorsement as soon as he speaks? That's up to the President. I'm going to be... Uh, as I said, working hard uh, all day today, we're going to continue to do everything we can to get people out to vote in the upcoming contests uh, tomorrow. Um, I'll have something to say uh, tomorrow night. Um, but I look forward to campaigning with the president and everyone else because, as I said in San Diego last week, um, I think that uh, Donald Trump is unqualified to be president and he is temperamentally unfit to be commander-in-chief. And I believe that 
with all my heart. And even if I weren't running, even if I were not uh, about to become the nominee, uh, I would be making the case against Donald Trump. And I will not stop making the case because I love this country. This country has been an extraordinary blessing to generations of Americans. We have fought through a lot of our problems and our challenges. We have moved forward toward a more perfect union. I will not let somebody who traffics in bigotry and bullying become president of the United States. That will not happen.